Today we're going to look at a relatively new and very unique product to hit the land surveying market. This comes from RS Survey Systems, the same company that makes the one point fits all system that was the subject of one of my previous videos. The RS 150M is a mini prism layout system designed for staking not only on floors but on walls and ceilings. For layout on hard surfaces, it really can't be beat. We'll look at some of its uses and how it can potentially increase your layout efficiency and accuracy four times traditional methods. I also challenged a coworker to a head-to-head -head layout competition that really showcases the benefits of it, so stick around. You won't want to miss this one if you do any layout work. When using reflectorless measurements for wall layout, you are restricted to a fairly tight angle of incidence if you want to maintain any decent level of accuracy, and even when shooting perpendicular to a wall with reflectorless, you'll never be as accurate as you would when measuring to a prism. Our EDMs just carry more error in RL versus IR. The RS150M really shines when doing any wall or vertical face layout. I've been on jobs where I've spent an entire 8 hour day marking hundreds of pile cutoff benchmarks over and over and if I had this with me there is no doubt I would have significantly increased my accuracy and efficiency in the field. The RS150M allows me to sail through setting grid lines, embeds, benchmarks or other layout points on a wall. When setting a benchmark you have the option of using a height of target of zero and sliding the prism down revealing the center lines behind the prism to make your mark or if you use an HT of negative 50 millimeters you can simply make your mark on the top edge of the prism holder. There really is no faster way to set an accurate benchmark. The RS150M can also be used on hard floors. A typical use case of this would be after a slab has been poured we often have to go back and lay out walls, columns, embeds, machinery, etc. on the new slab. This is typically done with a peanut prism, which works great. You have a small height of target, you're down on the ground where you have to make your mark, but you have to try and keep an eye on the level bubble of the prism and keep it plumb while simultaneously watching the layout numbers on your data collector's screen. With the RS150M, it just sits there. There's no need to constantly hold it or worry about it being plumb. Move the prism holder into position, slide the prism to the other side and make your mark in the exact right position. No more trying to either quickly pop the prism tip off the layout point and remember where it was while you make your mark or do your best to mark lines extending out from the tip of the prism while it's being held in place. The sliding mechanism of the RS150M is really genius and since it has a fixed height of 50 millimeters, you can also use it for elevations as well, making cuts and fills a breeze. This next one is a niche use case, but I've been in this situation more than a handful of times with no great solution to the problem. There are times when doing layout, say embeds for a steel column for example, where the client needs the location on the floor but also where it ties into the ceiling. This is by far the best solution for this situation. Since the 150M can work on any flat surface, it really excels when doing any kind of ceiling layout. Last but not least, formwork layout. This is a massive part of a surveyor's duties on a construction layout job. A typical workflow for the construction of tall concrete walls is that once the slab is poured, the site surveyor comes in and lays out the base of the walls on the slab by staking out the design wall line work or layout points. Then the first layer of formwork goes in and after the formwork gets to a certain height, the surveyor goes back to verify the formwork is being erected in the correct position by staking out the wall and working with the crew that's installing the formwork and making adjustments as needed. Once the formwork is within tolerance, we usually take a final shot on it and create a pre-pour formwork report that needs to be signed off before concrete is brought in and poured. Taller walls are typically done in lifts where three to four meters is poured, the framework is stripped off, slid up the wall, 
and the process is repeated until the wall is built to design height. We've been using peanut prisms for years, so why should we think about switching now? Typically, when performing this kind of survey, I would consider myself lucky to have the luxury of a platform to walk on while taking measurements on the edge of the formwork. Some sites make the effort to install them, but more often than not, I'm wearing fall protection with belly bars and climbing up the wall formwork, hanging off the side of the wall five meters in the air, trying to hold the data collector in one hand, a peanut prism in the other, and balance the tip of the prism on the very edge of the formwork, all while simultaneously looking at the level bubble and the data collector screen. Now what I can do with the RS150M is stake out the wall line work, hold the prism against the exterior of the forms, and since I know the offset of the prism is 50 mils, and given a form thickness of say 20 mils, I can call out where the formwork needs to move based on the measured offset to design line work. So for this example, if my shot says I'm 85 millimeters off design, I yell down to the formwork crew to move the form 15 millimeters in to hit design. And the real beauty is that I can hold the 150M secure against the edge of the formwork while they're slowly moving it in all while my total station is actively tracking me, so I can call out the shrinking offset as they get closer and closer to design. Try to balance a peanut prism, watch the screen and the level bubble all while the formwork is moving, and then try the same task with the 150M and let me know which tool you're reaching for next time. We've gone over the pros of the 150M so far, but every tool has some drawbacks. You're probably not going to be using this for layout on dirt or angled hard surfaces. There is no level bubble as it's designed to be held flat on surfaces that are either vertical or horizontal, which covers the vast majority of applications out there in the construction industry. This tool isn't meant to entirely replace a peanut prism. It's another tool in our tool belt that is indispensable in many situations. When I've used it before, I've had the question brought to me. How can you be sure it's plumb? Aren't you going to be adding a bunch of pull plumbness error if the wall or ground isn't level or plumb? Well, let's investigate that with a bit of math. A really poorly constructed vertical concrete wall will be about 25 millimeters over five meters. If that were the case, it would introduce a quarter of a single millimeter of vertical error given that we have a tilting height of 50 millimeters. Completely negligible. And in my experience of doing quite a few floor flatness surveys, it's really a non-issue in the vast majority of slabs out there. If we're looking at the worst case scenario, where we're doing layout on a slab designed for water runoff, where an intentional slope was put in, with a 50 mil tilting height and a floor designed with a typical drainage slope of one to 50, we would see a one millimeter pole plumbness error and with the marking system of sliding the prism out of the way while being able to precisely mark that layout point, we will 100% recoup the vast majority of that error versus trying to mark the point of the tip of a peanut prism. Not to mention the nodal prism used in the 150M is much more accurate than the typical Chinese knockoff prisms you see floating around. And if one were using a full-size topo rod, they would see a lot more than one millimeter of pole plumbness error. If accuracy was my concern, I would say there are few situations the RS150M could be beat. One feature I wouldn't mind seeing added to the stakeout tool is a spirit level bubble along one of the edges. This would allow us to make sure the line we are marking for benchmarks is flat without having to pull out a separate level like we do now when using RL or a peanut prism to set a benchmark. That being said, you can eye it out pretty good, and I always mark a crow's foot at the center of the horizontal line I make, and most people using a benchmark know that this is the point one should be using to reference a height to. Even if they pulled the height from elsewhere on the line, you'd have to be quite a bit out of level to make a mark that isn't flat enough to introduce a significant amount of error depending on how far you extend your benchmark line. I wanted to test how accurate and efficient the stakeout tool is at layout compared to a peanut prism. I can sit here all day and sing its praises, but let's see a real side-by-side -side comparison. 
I challenged a coworker to a friendly competition. We both had to lay out a one foot by one foot embed on the ground, wall and ceiling and two benchmarks at specified heights. We timed it then QC'd the relative accuracy of the layout by measuring the distance of each side of the embed laid out. A small asterisk to this competition is that my colleague doesn't do a ton of construction layout as he is our UAV and hydrographic specialist, but he has done enough to put up a decent fight. The 150M had a modest advantage in efficiency when laying out the ground points at finishing the task in half the amount of time. Not having to worry about keeping an eye on the level bubble and being able to glide the prism holder across the floor while observing the changing deltas in the data collector was much easier than leveling up the mini looking away to check the deltas on the data collector and quickly jumping your eyes back to the mini to make sure you were still level. Being able to slide the prism over to the other side of the holder to make my mark was just fantastic. As far as quality control went, we were expecting this test to be where the two prisms would be most closely matched. The peanut prism had one side under a millimeter, two sides with three millimeters of deviation, and one side with four millimeters of deviation, all within a typical five millimeter embed layout spec. The RS had two sides that were under one millimeter, one side that was about a millimeter, and one side that was a millimeter and a half. We could call it twice as fast and about twice as accurate for ground layout based on this quick test. For vertical benchmark comparison, I gotta say the 150M is an absolute beast when it comes to setting benchmarks fast. Here the time savings grew to sixfold over trying to use the mini. To be fair, it's tough to try and lay out a benchmark on a wall with only a peanut prism, and doing so you're liable to introduce a significant amount of error if you're not careful. My colleague could have tried to set these reflectorlessly, but the angle of incidence would have caused a glancing measurement and was working solo in this example. There are little tips and tricks that one can use to set benchmarks when, when working alone with traditional equipment, but I have to say they do not compare to the speed and accuracy of having the 150M. With the method Josh chose to use for his benchmark layout, we saw a vertical deviation of eight millimeters between the two benchmarks set. The RS saw a vertical deviation of 1.5 millimeters between benchmarks. Considering I was in tracking mode, 1.5 mils isn't too bad, but I'm willing to bet I could get sub millimeter relative accuracy if I repeated this one. To sum up this test, we had about a 6x increase in efficiency and a 5x increase in relative accuracy. Now we're starting to get into the fun stuff, the wall layout. Josh decided to use the same method for the wall layout as he did for the benchmarks for the same reasons I mentioned earlier. Considering he was working solo, RL would not have worked without a backstop because of the angle and all he had available was a peanut prism. The layout performed with the 150M was four times faster than the layout with the peanut prism. Wall layout was an absolute breeze with the stakeout tool. I wasn't worrying about the level of the prism, the stakeout tool didn't slip or slide on the wall and making my marks was extremely easy. The QC of the wall marks from the peanut prism showed one side with a deviation of one millimeter, two sides with a deviation of 1.5 millimeter, and one side with a deviation of eight mils. That large deviation was probably due to trying to mark the tip of the peanut prism that may have not been level at the time. The RS150M had three sides under one millimeter of deviation and one side with one millimeter of deviation. Here we saw a 4x increase in efficiency and a 5x increase in relative accuracy. And last but not least, the ceiling layout. Anyone that's had to lay out a point on an inverted surface knows what a pain it can be. The fisheye level bubble on a prism is not designed to work upside down as the glass encasing the level bubble is a curved surface. I fully expected Josh to throw in the towel and give up on trying to lay out the embed on the ceiling, but he stuck it out and did his best and considering what he had to work with, it wasn't too bad at all. The 150M was five times faster than the peanut prism for this test. Again, not having to mess around with the level bubble and being able to keep my eyes on the data collector made all the difference in the world. I wasn't expecting anything remotely close for the QC checks on the peanut prism for this test. 
but one side was actually within three millimeters. However, the other three sides were between 11 and 14 millimeters out. The RS150M performed exactly as expected with deviations on all four sides of a millimeter or less. The 150M doesn't solve all of your problems when doing construction layout, but it solves some of them. Considering it's cheaper than a typical peanut prism of equal quality, and it does many things that a typical layout prism can't, for the price, it's really a no-brainer. In my brief field test, it proved to be about four times faster and four times as accurate on average. We didn't fudge the numbers or redo tests. Everything was done on the up and up. I'm not paid by RS systems. I don't get a commission for sales. I don't have an affiliate link. There really isn't anything in it for me to lie about their products. I just really appreciate a company that charges a fair price for a great product and doesn't make misleading claims about their gear. Unfortunately, these qualities are becoming more and more rare these days. In my opinion, every construction survey and crew should have one of these at their disposal if they do layout on concrete, metal, or other hard surfaces. I believe RS Systems recently acquired a North American distributor, which makes buying their gear on this side of the world much easier. I'll leave a link in the description to their website where you can check out the RS150M and some of their other gear. Thanks for watching and as always, subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.